we are mass poisoning this generation of kids. We saw this explosion of neurodevelopmental disorders. So ADD, ADHD, speech delay, language delay, tics, sleep disorders, Tourette's syndrome, uh, narcolepsy, ASD, autism, all these diseases that prior to 1989, we never heard of them. Right. We didn't know anybody who had them. And then all the autoimmune diseases suddenly exploded that year. The juvenile diabetes, rheumatoid arthritis, these exotic diseases like Crohn's disease and lupus. Suddenly everybody, all these kids got these, are sick. And the allergic diseases suddenly appeared. Again in 1989, in that area, early 90s, peanut allergies. I had 11 siblings, 70 cousins. I didn't know anybody with a food allergy. Why do five of my kids have, you know, have these anaphylactic allergies? So RFK Jr., you know, is a known crank contrarian when it comes to these kind of health issues. His uh, his views are well outside the mainstream. He's not taken seriously by scientists or doctors for a reason, because he speaks a lot of nonsense. There's a lot to unpack there, and I, I can't get to every everything that he threw out. But essentially, he's trying to make this case that all of these diseases suddenly started increasing in the late 1980s and 1990s. Therefore, there must be some environmental cause. He doesn't say what he thinks it is, but we all know we He's talking about vaccines, right? That's like always his big boogeyman in terms of what's causing all these things, especially autism. Let's talk about the autism numbers specifically, and then this is sort of representative of everything that, that he's talking about there, although obviously there's a lot of different details with the different specific diseases. So did autism suddenly increase in the 1980s, 1990s? You know, again, he makes this blanket statement. No one ever heard about it before, like as if it didn't exist. So that's completely wrong. Uh, these entities all existed. They were recognized. They, they were identified. They were diagnosed. Maybe they were used, um, they were called different names, or they, we didn't know specifically what they were. But these clinical entities all go back into, you know, 100, 200 years ago, whenever we, you know, had physicians who made these clinical observations and were able to document it. Um, but then the question is, why were these diagnoses increasing? So there's, it's definitely true that, like, say, autism diagnoses have been increasing since the 1980s. But does that mean that autism itself is increasing or just our ability to diagnose it has been increasing? And that's a very interesting, specific scientific question that has been researched extensively. And what the research finds is a number of things. One is that there are a number of other things going on that would increase the number of people with an autism spectrum disorder diagnosis, even without any actual change in the incidence or prevalence of, of ASD. So one is an expansion of the diagnostic criteria, right? This also happened with ADHD, for example, which is something else that he threw up on the list. So if you expand... The, the criteria for the diagnosis, then it's going to capture more people and the numbers will go up. Another one is what we call diagnostic substitution. You know, people, kids in the 1970s, are you saying that they didn't have autism? Or is it possible that if that a, a, you know, a, a middle schooler in the 1970s with autism would have been diagnosed with something else? And that something else is today diagnosed as autism. And so that's called diagnostic substitution. And in fact, that absolutely happens, has happened as well, is that other diagnoses have been de decreasing as ASD has been increasing because, you know, the, the diagnostic patterns are changing. And then another big factor is what we call surveillance. We're looking for it more, Right. It, you know, you're only going to diagnose people with any condition if you're looking for it. And that has multiple components. So one is, are people or family members of those with the condition seeking out a diagnosis? Are they presenting to doctors, professionals who could make the diagnosis? Um, and are professionals looking for it? Are they doing the tests, doing the evaluations that would result in that diagnosis? That also relates a lot to stigma. If the diagnosis has a stigma attached to it, people will not seek it out as often. They, won't, they don't want the diagnosis. Um, for example, autism carried the stigma of the refrigerator moms, right? So back in the day, 60s, 70s, it was thought to be due to bad parenting. Same thing with ADHD. There's a huge stigma attached to it. You're a bad parent if you have a kid with ADHD or autism. And so that stigma 
prevents people from coming forward and saying, I want my kid tested. I want him to get a label. I want him to have a diagnosis. On the other side, if services are attached to the diagnosis, then people seek it out. And that's been happening as well. If you're in the public school system and your child has a diagnosis of autism, for example, then the, then the law requires that the school provides for them accommodations. Right. So and resources and services. So if you want to avail yourself of all of those services, you want the diagnosis. So it's the opposite of having a stigma attached to it. There's a benefit attached to having the diagnosis. So, of course, diagnoses have been increasing. So how do we know, however, if there's any real increase hiding in that data? Well, there's a number of ways you can do that. You could look and see if at different age groups, if you if you look at um, and apply the consistent diagnostic criteria across different age groups, you can see, well, is it increasing in younger populations or are there just as many 50-year-olds with autism as there are 10-year-olds with autism in terms of the you know, percentage of the population? You can also, if you have studies where accurate uh, medical records were kept as part of that database or you just have medical records going back decades, then what you could do is, all right, we're going to take a look at the medical records that are available from the 80s, from the 90s, from the, from the 2000s, and we're, we are going to apply the same diagnostic criteria to all of these records and see if there's an increase over time. And guess what? When you do that with autism, the, the incidence is flat. It's the same. There's the same percentage, the same number of people with autism 20 years ago as there is today. If you apply the same surveillance and diagnostic criteria, right? But of course, the number of people who are walking around with the diagnosis is dramatically increased because we're looking for it more and we're diagnosing it more and there are services attached to it and we've expanded the diagnostic criteria. That's it. But people like RFK, who I don't know if he just doesn't understand this or if he doesn't want to understand it because it doesn't fit his political narrative. But for people like him, they just look at the raw numbers and then they manufacture this idea that, well, there's got to be something environmental that's causing it. Um, yet there's no evidence that that's the case, right? There's no evidence that there is any environmental factor that's causing autism, which is a genetic disorder, right? Autism is genetic. The evidence overwhelmingly shows that. Uh, there is no evidence linking vaccines to autism. RFK thinks that there is. He's wrong. He's wrong because he's not a scientist and he doesn't know what he's talking about. He has a political narrative that he is pushing. He has a story that he's pushing. That's it. The scientific community has looked at this in detail, and not just in the United States. You know there are other countries in the world, and other countries have their own medical professions and medical organizations, and they look at the data too. And so this question of vaccines and autism, for example, or just autism incidents, for example, has been looked at independently in Sweden and Japan and Korea and countries around the world, and they all come up with the same answer, and that is it's not really increasing. It's a diagnostic artifact, and two, it's not correlating with vaccines, any vaccine at all. Vaccines do not cause autism. But RFK will never be convinced of that because that is his political narrative and he's not a scientist and he doesn't look at the data objectively and thoroughly the way actual experts do. In cases like this, listen to the experts. Don't listen to guru politicians who have something to sell you.